Hello! This will be part one of my review and comparison of the American Precision Arms Little Bastard Gen 2 and the Huber Concepts Square Brake. In this video, I will be going over the design elements of each brake as well as a home experiment to see how each one might function. And in the next video, I'll be putting these head to head out on the range to see where each one might shine. Right off the bat, we can see that these two brakes are about as dissimilar as brakes can get. In both size and operation, they represent different viewpoints in how a brake should operate. First, let's look at the LB. Looking closely at the interior, we can see that a lot of thought went into the baffle design. We can see that there are these leading edges on the top and the bottom of all three baffles, directing the blast outwards. This brake uses a 60 degree port orientation to the axis of the bore, as opposed to a more traditional 90 degree orientation. The methodology behind this is that directing blast rearwards towards the shooter will provide additional recoil reduction. But as with all things in life, there are no free rides. The drawback to this design is that it increases the already loud report of a muzzle brake, especially to the shooter. This is going to be subjective shooter to shooter if it is a desirable trade-off, and it will also be dependent on the cartridge the brake is used with. I placed this brake on the rifle to show what this large nut in the back is for. If you have a rifle that is already threaded, and you put this brake on, you simply index it to your proper index, and tighten down the nut, and everything is done without need for an additional shim kit or an additional nut system. Because this is all integrated into the brake, it makes for a pretty attractive system. Next up, we have the square brake. And we can see that the square brake is dramatically longer than the LB, four inches to the LB's 2.25 inches, and it also weighs more, 7.8 ounces to the LB's 4.2 ounces, according to my home scale. Looking more closely at the Huber brake, we can see that this uses a 90 degree port orientation. However, the ports are staggered and there are a lot more of them than is typically seen on a standard brake. And we can see by looking at the inside, this gives a lot of bearing surface available, available for directing gas. There are a couple options as to using a shim system. I'm looking on my rifle that a 4 thousandths thick shim set everything up properly, but another option is to use one of these, which is simply a nut manufactured by AP Manufacturing. Put the nut onto the rifle, put your brake on, and tighten everything down. The nut then becomes the shoulder that the brake puts pressure against, and everything can be indexed properly. This may or may not be a more attractive option than the LB, that's gonna be subjective, but is definitely easier than using a shim system, and I picked a pair of these up off of Amazon for $7. Both of these brakes are currently coated with an aftermarket DLC. The LB originally came parkerized, and the square brake came with a very attractive pattern laser etched into it. However, that pattern needed to be removed during prep for the DLC coating. Before I went out to the range, I wanted to get a feel for how each of these brakes might handle the gas flow. So I set a barrel up so I could blow talcum powder through it with an air compressor, and I recorded how each brake handled the powder as it came out. Let's start with the square brake. Freezing here, we can see that the first port expels more powder, with the following ports having a very even distribution front to back. We can also see that the blast extends out and slightly back. Here we have the LB. Freezing here, we can see that the first port is expelling more powder than the following ports, much like the square break. You can easily see that this brake directs the blast in a much more rearward direction. And here you can see the airflow directly down the axis of the bore. There is basically nothing directed at the sides of the brake, showing that the rear facing ports are pretty effective at directing flow. However, we know that gases under high pressure flow more like a liquid than a gas. This powder is just being carried by 180 psi, and it will not follow the path the gas takes at 60,000 psi. Since I had already made a mess in my garage covering everything in talcum powder, I decided to shoot some water through as well just to see if it would be different. 
Starting with ELB, we can see that the water takes the same path as the talcum powder did. What's easier to see with the water is that the first port is ejecting more than the next two ports. Moving on to the water run on the square break, here again we can see that the first port is ejecting more with the even distribution in the following ports. This is contrary to previous research on muzzle breaks, showing diminishing returns, especially after the third set of ports, link in the description. Most likely this experience is because I am dealing with very low pressures. While this experiment was fun, please keep in mind that the brakes will function differently under live fire and high pressures. In the next video we will put rounds through each of these and see how they stack up against each other. Thanks for watching.